Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. I'll bring the generic Goblin noise! This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. I'm also sponsored by Face to Face Games, Canada's premier Magic the Gathering store. Using the promo code MTGMUDSTA will get you 5% off site wide, with eligible orders getting free shipping Canada wide. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game sees Nick, Max, and MJ returning, with Max playing the new Mishra. Unfortunately, his opening hand is a bit obscured and all I can see is Padim. Presumably he has six other cards, but I don't know what they are. Nick is playing Alrund, God of Cosmos, keeping Gadwick the Wizened, Rapid Hybridization, Cavalier of Gales, Mall Drifter, and Three Islands. MJ is once more playing the new Felden, keeping Valakut Exploration, Three Mountains, Zerzoth, Chaos Rider, Great Furnace, and Humble Defector. I am playing Marnius Kalgar, which is basically just the precon, keeping Arcane Signet, Plains, Prairie Stream, Naam Shai Murad, Swamp, Evolving Wilds, and a Darkwater Catacombs. I win the die roll and start us off. I draw and play an Evolving Wilds, cracking it and passing. Nick just plays an island. Max draws, plays a Temple of Malice, scries one, and passes. MJ just draws and plays a Mountain. I've got a Swamp for turn and cast Arcane Signet. Nick plays another Island and pays one for Sensei's Divining Top. Max plays an Island as well and casts an Iker Wellspring, drawing a card as it comes in. MJ plays a Mountain, and casts Swiftfoot Boots, and then ships the turn to me. I draw, and play a Prairie Stream. I then play out Inquisitor Eisenhorn, passing a Nick. Nick draws, and plays an Island. He casts Alrond on the backside as Hakka, passing after that. Max plays a Swamp, and casts an Audacious Reshapers, passing to MJ. MJ draws, and they play a Mountain, and cast Humble Defector. They equip the Humble Defector with the boots, and generously donate them to me, after drawing two cards. After that, they pass. I don't reveal an instant or sorcery from Eisenhorn, but I do draw planes, and play it. And then tap the Defector, to draw two, and donate it back to MJ. I then tap enough from Marnius Kalgar, Passing turn, and during my end step, Nick activates the top to reorder his top three. Nick draws and plays an island. He plays out a solemn simulacrum, going to find another basic island to the field tapped, and passes to Max. Max plays a smoldering marsh and plays a foundry inspector, and is then able to cast Emery for only one blue. Emery enters, milling Max for four. He then activates the Reshapers, sacrificing the Wellspring to draw a card, and flips into a Silas Wren, taking one. After that, he passes. MJ plays a Reliquary Tower for their land for turn, and they activate the Defectors, giving them to Nick this time. They then pay three for a Darksteel Plate, and pass after that. I've got a Planes for turn, and go to combat, swinging Marnius at max for three double strike damage. After that, I keep my mana up, and pass to Nick. Nick's got an island, and goes to combat, swinging Hak at me for two. With his commander connecting, he returns it to his hand, and scries two. He then plays Alrund on the front side, and goes to his end step, naming Creature. This lets him reveal a Sage of Beyond from his top three, and puts it in his hand. Nick then has to discard down to hand size, passing. Max draws, and activates Emery, replaying the Iker Wellspring, and drawing a card. He then plays a Rakdos Signet, and sacrifices the Wellspring once more to the Reshapers, taking three this time to put a Gilded Lotus into play. Max then follows it up by casting Mishra, and going to combat, and he makes a token copy of the Gilded Lotus. He swings Silas Ren at me for two, 
and after I declare no blocks, sacrifices the Gilded Lotus copy to cast a Blast Furnace Hellkite, and Silas Ren gets Double Strike. I take four, and Max gets to cast two artifacts from his graveyard afterwards. And in his post-combat main phase, he plays an Exotic Orchard, and then casts the Iker Wellspring off Silas Ren, drawing another card. MJ draws and plays a Mountain. They play a Sculpting Steel as a copy of Gilded Lotus, and activate their Humble Defectors again, drawing two and donating them to Nick. After that, MJ casts Felden, and equips their commander with the Dark Steel Plate, and follows it up with their own copy of Sensei's Divining Top. After that, they pass, and I activate Marnius Calgar on my end step to make two 2 2 Astaria Warrior tokens and draw a card. I draw and play a Darkwater Catacombs. I then play a Knight Paladin, which deals 4 to each of my opponents on the Enter the Battlefield trigger, and after that, I pass. During my end step, Nick activates his top. Nick draws and activates the Humble Defector, this time donating it to me. He then plays a Brainstorm, and after that resolves, plays an Island. He follows up with an putting it onto Alrund, and goes to combat. He swings him at Max, and taps the Hellkite. Max then chumps with the Foundry Inspector, and after that, Nick moves to his end step, naming creatures again with the Alrund trigger, and revealing the Sage of Beyond again, and a Mull Drifter to put to hand. Max draws, and plays a Smelting Bat. He then activates their Audacious Reshapers, sacrificing the Wellspring, and reveals until he hits a seat of the Synod, taking two. Max follows up with Sahili Ray, and down takes her to make a Gilded Lotus copy, and then casts Padim. Max then uses the Smelting Bat to sacrifice the Gilded Lotus copy, and reveals his top eight, putting onto the field an Oni Cult Anvil and a Soul Ring. Going to combat, Max once more makes a second copy of the Gilded Lotus with Mishra's trigger, and swings the Hellkite at me, the Gilded Lotus copy and Mishra at Nick, and Silas Ren at MJ. Before blocks, Nick casts Rapid Hybridization on the Hellkite to remove all the double strike. Nick then jumps Mishra with the Solemn, and MJ takes the two from Silas. In Max's post-combat main phase, with Silas having connected, he casts Foundry Inspector from his graveyard, and then plays Muzio. Once that's done, he activates Emery to cast the Ikor Wellspring again from his graveyard. Max then immediately sacrifices the Wellspring to the Oni Cunt Anvil, and pinks us all for one, draws a card, and makes a construct. After all that value, he passes to MJ. MJ draws and plays an Aetherflux Reservoir. They then play a Mishra's Bobble, gaining two. They follow that with Valakut Exploration, and activate the top to draw a card and put the top on top. MJ then follows up by playing a land, exiling the top, and then replaying it, gaining four more life. Going to combat, MJ swings Felden at max for two, who blocks this frog token. With Felden taking some damage, MJ exiles their top three from their library, and chooses to keep the Inferno Titan. I draw and play Tranquil Cove, gaining one. I then play a Thunderhawk Gunship, making two more warrior tokens and drawing a card. I then tap the Humble Defector, giving it back to MJ, and go to combat. I swing Marnius Calgar at Max, who blocks with his Construct token, and after that, I pass. Nick draws and goes to combat, swinging Alrund at Max and tapping the Beast token. Max once more blocks with the Foundry Inspector, and in Nick's post-combat main phase, he plays Min. He follows her up with a Gadwick, where X is 1, drawing a card, and triggering Min, making an Illusion token. He then plays an Island for turn. During his end step, Nick names Instance and reveals Reality Shift from the Alrun trigger, putting it to hand and passing. Max plays a Temple of Epiphany, and scries 1. He activates Emery to cast the Foundry Inspector, and then activates Muzio, revealing a Swiftfoot Boots to put into play. 
He then upticks Sahili to ping us all for one, and scries one. Going to combat, Max makes another Gilded Lotus token with Mishra, and swings Silas Ren and Mishra at MJ for seven. MJ takes the hit, and after combat, Max recasts the Iker Wellspring, and then sacrifices it to the Reshapers again, drawing a card, and putting an Oblivion Stone into play and taking one. He then follows that up with a Thran Dynamo, and sacrifices the Guild Lotus to the Smelting Vat, this time putting Felwar Stone and Demir Signet into play. With that done, Max passes. MJ draws and plays a Mirage Mirror, then activates it to make a copy of the Aetherflux Reservoir. They then pull the same tricks as last turn and put the top on top, and then play a land and exile it to cast it again, and this time gains a bunch of life. They then top the top again and activate the Humble Defector, giving it to me and drawing the top once more and another card. They then recast the top, and then a scroll rack. With the Aetherflux Reservoir triggers on the stack, Max activates the Oblivion Stone to destroy the board, because he's afraid of getting blasted in the face. This resolves, and MJ then goes to 52 life after the triggers resolve. Going to combat, MJ then swings Felden at Max and deals 2, and then activates the scroll rack before passing me. I draw but have nothing to cast, and instead go to discard and pass. Nick plays a Teferi's Insight in his main phase, and follows up with a Cavalier of Gales, drawing 6 and putting 2 back. He then goes to combat, swinging Alrund at MJ for 11. After that, he plays an island, and goes to his end step. He gets his Alrun trigger, naming artifacts, and reveals a wizard's spellbook and Sensei's divining top. Max draws, and plays an island. He plays out Saravok's tome, which gives him the initiative, and he goes to find a basic with it as he goes into the Undercity. He then plays a Master Transmuter, passing to MJ. MJ draws, and plays a Mountain. Going to combat, MJ swings Felden at Max, who takes the hit, and MJ gains the initiative, and goes into the Undercity, finding a Mountain. They then play a Brash Taunter, and sends his Divining Top again. After that, MJ passes, and during their end step, I flash in a Sicarian Infiltrator, paying for Squad twice, getting three copies, and drawing three cards. I draw, and play Memorial to Glory, while MJ does their scroll rack shenanigans. I then play an Everflowing Chalice, kick three times, and go to combat. I swing two Infiltrators at MJ, who blocks one of them with the Brash Taunter, but takes the hit from the other one. With the Brash Taunter trigger, MJ pings one with the Taunter, while I gain the initiative and go and grab an island. I then pass after that. Nick draws and casts Jace the Mind Sculptor, using the zero ability to brainstorm, drawing six and putting two back. He then plays a Thought Vessel to keep his ridiculously sized hand, and goes to combat. He swings the Cavalier at me for five in the air, taking the initiative, and going to find an island, and adding yet another token to track on the Undercity card. Nick then plays Lightning Greaves, and passes, naming Creature off of Alrund, and this time revealing Thassa, God of the Sea. Max draws, and activates Master Transmuter, picking up the Saravox Tome, floating mana off of it, and then putting it back to venture further. He then plays a Tersari's Devastation, giving all creatures minus three minus three. With that done, he drops a Kappa Cannoneer, passing to MJ. MJ plays a Valakut as their land for turn, which comes in tapped, and they cast a Caves of Chaos Adventurer, taking the initiative back again. MJ then equips the Adventurer with a Dark Steel Plate, passing to me. I draw, and play an Island. I play out a Thunderwolf Cavalry, passing to Nick. Nick draws and goes to combat. He swings Alrond at Max, and the Cavalier at MJ. Max chumps with the Cannoneer, while MJ takes the 5. This has Nick gaining the initiative, and scrying 2 as he moves into another room in the Undercity. He then plays Morden Kanan, and down takes him to make a dog. Unfortunately at this point, I step on my keyboard, and I mess up the overlay for a bit. 
He then plays a Reliquary Tower before casting a Sturmgeist. After that, he names the land with Alrund, revealing two islands and passing. Vax draws and plays a Vault of Whispers. He then replays Mishra and goes to combat, making a copy of Saravok's Tome and regaining the initiative. Max follows it by using the Tome's new ability to help cast Kikijiki, and then activates Kikijiki to make a copy of the creature version of the Tome and takes the initiative again. He makes a 4-1 skeleton as he moves into another room in the Undercity and passes, with MJ activating their top on the end step. MJ draws and plays a mountain, dealing 3 to Mordekainen. They then play a Sunbird's Invocation and follow up with Bonus Round, revealing a Goblin Sharpshooter off the Sunbird's trigger. MJ then casts a Blasphemous Act and gets to cast a Duretti off the Sunbird's trigger. Max responds by activating the Master Transmuter to save itself and put out a Drossford Bridge into play. With two Blasphemous Acts, the board definitely gets wiped, save for MJ's Caves of Chaos Adventurer and Nick's dog token which is incredibly big. MJ then down takes to ready, sacrificing their scroll rack to bring back the sculpting steel and has it come in as a copy of Servok's tome, stealing the initiative once more. Moving to combat, MJ swings the adventurer at Nick for 7 and reveals a soul ring off the trigger. Nick then takes the 7 and MJ casts soul ring. After that, MJ passes and during their end step, I crack my memorial for two soldiers. I draw and play Exotic Orchard. I then play out an Ultramarine's Honor Guard, squatting it up four times. Moving to combat, I swing a Soldier at the ready and one at MJ, taking the initiative as a connect. I get to scry two from the Undercity and pass after that. Nick draws and activates Brainstorm with Jace again, drawing six and putting two back. He then plays out Sir Elnora, drawing a card as she enters. He follows that up with Thassa and activates Thassa on Sir Eleonora before equipping her with the boots. Nick then activates Thassa on the dog and going to combat, swings the dog at me and Eleonora at MJ. I die, while MJ takes a whopping 20 damage and Nick regains the initiative, making a treasure token. After that, Nick passes. Max draws and replays Mishra. He goes to combat, making another tome with the Mishra trigger, gaining the initiative and finishing the Undercity. He reveals his top 10 but sadly hits zero creatures off of it. And then activates the other Saravox tome to reveal until he hits a non-land card and cast it for free. Max continues his lucky streak with a Mycosynth Wellspring for it, and he goes to grab an island. He then plays an Izzet Boilerworks, bouncing a temple back to hand. With that exciting turn over, Max passes his turn. MJ draws and plays a Mountain, killing Jace with a Valica trigger. They then play a Basilisk Collar and equips it onto the Adventurer. MJ then follows up with Torbrand, revealing a Bloodstorm Steward from the Sunbird's trigger. MJ follows that up with Chandra Pyromancer, and upticks her to deal a damage to Nick and one to Thassa. Nick responds by casting Pongify and targets Torbrand to save some damage. MJ then goes to combat, swinging the Adventurer at Nick for 7, and revealing Xerzoth off the top and casting it. After that, MJ passes. Nick draws and activates Thassa on the dog, and then moves the Greaves to it, and activates Thassa on Sir Eleonora. Moving to combat, Nick needs only swing an unblockable lethal creature at MJ and Max, winning him the game. Game review time. Again, I don't think I could speak any more highly of the Warhammer 40,000 precon decks. 
Even against decks that were built completely from scratch, the deck was able to hold its own, and I was even kind of a threat with those Ultramarine Honor Guard squads at the end. Max's Mishra deck was also a pre-con that he tweaked slightly, with some fun cards like Saravox Tome. I know that some people don't enjoy the Monarch Sash Initiative mechanic, but I'm actually a big fan of it, as it incentivizes people who otherwise might not attack into attacking. You get some decent value, some fun effects, and I think it just adds to the game. MJ's Felden deck continues to be a bit of a mystery to me. I believe they have a lot of pinging effects and brash taunter effects that allow them to basically get maximized on the value of pinging their creatures, either to get cards or blast people in the face. That being said, it seemed like they really started to get going near the end, but unfortunately unblockable creatures put them to a quick end. Nick's Alrun God of the Cosmos deck, aka Yowie Hands as he puts it, is a big, big blue draw deck. He does have a couple counterspells in it, although I don't think we actually saw any counterspells from any decks this game, but it primarily wants to make big creatures thanks to having big hands. I'm always for colors doing things that they don't normally do, and instead of being a controlling deck, Nick's deck was more focused on aggro and combat. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.